Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to church this morning. And sharing from Revelation chapter 2, starting at verse 18, and we're looking into the mind. That's what we're concentrating on um, over the last couple of Sundays. And we're looking at the mind here from Revelation chapter 2. And uh, this kind of came about just through a, a friend from a, Pastor Julian from Gospel Assemblies in India, who included a verse from here uh, in an email that he sent me this week. And um, so, yeah, let's dive into this and see what the Lord says. And God's word, precious word says from Revelation chapter 2, starting verse 18. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, the son of God, the one whose eyes are like a flame, are like a fiery flame, whose feet are like bronze, says, I know your works, your love, faithfulness, service, endurance. Your last works are greater than the first, but I have this against you. You tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and teaches and deceives my slaves to commit sexual immorality and to eat meat sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to repent of her sexual immorality. Look, I will throw her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of her practices. I will kill her children with the plagues. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who examines minds and hearts, and I will give to each of you according to your works. I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold the, this teaching, who haven't known the deep things of Satan, I do not put any other burden on you. But hold on to what you have until I come, the victor and the one who keeps my works to the end. I will give him authority over the nations, and he will shepherd them with an iron scepter, and he will shatter them like pottery. Just as I have received this from my father, I will also give him the morning star. Anyone who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. So may God add the blessing of the reading of his word. And we know, don't we, whenever we read the book of Revelation, there is a blessing of God that goes with it once it's read. So welcome, sit back, enjoy, and may the Lord speak to your hearts this morning. Bless you. Good morning, saints of God, and I hope you've got the armour of God on, and it is good to meet again together like this, and to look into God's precious word, to keep our minds focused on the Lord, as we meet on the Lord's day. It's so easy during these days of Covid, that Sunday just becomes another day. The Lord's day just is another day. But let's set this time apart to seek the Lord, to press in and learn from his precious word. And we've been looking over the last couple of Sundays at the mind. And that's where the battle is raging. That's where the enemy fires his fiery darts in to attack your mind. And he wants to capture your thoughts. He wants to capture your imagination and control your thinking. And if he can control your thinking, then he controls your actions and what you say and what you do. And Jesus, we know from Scripture, from the book of Revelation, there in Thyatira land, <laughs> at the church of Thyatira, that he diligently examines the, and searches the mind and the heart. Just there in verse 23, and I will, this is strong words from Jesus. We don't expect Jesus to say these words, do we? But he says them. Verse 23, and I will kill 
her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches hearts and minds. And I will repay each of you according to your deeds. These are strong words from our Lord and Saviour. These are strong words that Jesus is saying he's going to be killing children with death. But you have to look at the context. You have to see what Jesus is really saying here. You see, these children, who these are the followers of Jezebel, just like we are the followers of Jesus. We are Jesus' children. We are God the Father's children, his sons and his daughters. So to the enemy, he has his sons and daughters. He has his children. And here we're seeing that the children of Jezebel, who follow evil, and this evil that the children of Jezebel are engaged in, it, it, it's, it's a perversion, it, it, it's harmful, it, 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 it's immor immoral, it's idolatrous, it even leads to child sacrifice. Hence what, where, why, hence why Jezebel's followers, or Jezebel's children, will be judged so severely because they are degrading one another. They're, they're harming, and what, what they're doing is, is absolutely evil before a holy God. And so Jesus will judge their minds and their hearts. And the church would know this. The church would know that Jesus judges the minds and, and the hearts. The church would know by Jesus' action towards Jezebel and her followers that evil will be judged. Praise God. When evil is done, God will judge it. You know, that he searches heart and mind. He deals with people's actions. We are responsible for what we do, for what we say. Praise God, there's grace, mercy and forgiveness. Else none of us would be able to stand before a holy God. And we can note here, can't we, that Jezebel, she captures hearts and minds of, of, of men and women. Jezebel wants your mind, she wants your heart, because she wants your devotion, she wants your service, therefore she wants your worship. And we have to ask ourselves, who do we serve? Who do I serve? Who do I follow? Who do I worship? Who am I devoted to in this world? Praise God. The Lord Jesus Christ, I know He's saved me and He's kept me. And He keeps me safe. You know, and I pray that you find Jesus and that you know Him. And a very, much more than I do, I pray you get to know Him so deeply. So He may preserve you in this Thyatira land. You know, and friends, here we find that the powers of darkness that affect your thinking can even allow the church to become quiet and not to speak out when there is evil in the land. When we turn a blind eye to the sin and evil that is going on in society, we're just as bad. You know, for evil to prevail, it takes good men to do nothing and good women to do nothing. See, verse 24 says, Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets. I will not impose any other burden on you. The followers, the children of Jezebel, boast in the deep secrets of Satan by which they seductively trap people and indulge the flesh. You know, the thinking becomes, do what thou wilt. Thinking which is rooted in selfishness. 
thinking that exalts the self in being God. I am the God of my universe and I can do whatever I want. This selfishness in being a child of Jezebel, it destroys relationships. You begin to seek to dominate and control and to manipulate so that you are lifted up and you are exalted and everyone is there to meet your needs, to make you feel special, to make you feel good, to make you feel loved. And you end up in this world of self-gratification and you will go to any length to, to, to be satisfied. Drinking from the cup of Jezebel will ultimately lead to your destruction. See, verse 25 says, But hold on to what you have until I come. That's what the Lord Jesus says to the church. To those in the land, in Thyatira land, hold on, grasp what I've given you, don't let it go. <clears throat> Jesus is saying hold fast to the church in Thyatira with a firm grip until I return. Hold on to doing my works, hold on to being faithful. Continue to endure in the pure love of the Lord Jesus Christ, serving and loving others to advance the kingdom of God. If you don't, the enemy will rip it from you if it were possible. The point I want to make is, the enemy, he seeks to capture your heart. He seeks to capture your mind, to lead you into the deep knowledge of satanic perversion. I tell you, it is frightening, it's horrific when you honestly sit down before a holy God and you say, Lord, search my heart. Show me what's in my heart and the evil that can that is honestly there the evil that we are capable of as human beings is absolutely frightening we need to be rescued by the lord jesus christ and to hold fast to him you see the battle is for the minds and hearts of men and women there's a battle going on for the children's minds for the young, for the teenagers and the toddlers. There's a satanic world system that is out there that is geared towards the mind control of the human race to get it going in a direction that is anti-God and anti-Christ. And it delights itself in all manners of perversion and iniquity. See, our actions flow out of the heart. Our actions flow out of our mind and what we put into our mind. If something's not in our heart, if something's not in our mind, we cannot choose to do it. It can't even be thought about. As Christians, we want to do the works of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We want to be faithful in his service, doing the works that he has predestined us to achieve. If we want to do that, then naturally we must put Jesus' teaching and Jesus' life into our hearts and into our minds so that our desire and will can know what is right and know the direction to go in and walk in and be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do so. Our Western culture, like Thyatira, has become so confusingly sexualized and selfish. We need to put on the mind of Christ 
to act and serve in humility and love like Jesus did before a violent world. To remain faithful to Jesus so that Jezebel and her children cannot ensnare and capture you. If you see the workings of Jezebel coming towards you, you put your running shoes on and you run to Jesus. And you call out, Lord, save me, lest I perish. And the Lord, he is faithful and he covers his children with his wings. See, the depth of Satan is limited, praise God. The knowledge of Satan is limited. Oh, he knows more than you and me. But he doesn't know more than Father God. He's not even on the same level as Father God. Satan is limited. God's depth is so deep, you can never reach the bottom of it. God's love for you is deeper than the deepest ocean. God's love for you is wider than the circumference of this universe in which we live. All our resources, all that we need to follow Jesus in days like these that battle for your mind are found in Christ. He gives us the weapons of our warfare so we may stand. And we stand boldly and we stand strongly on the promises of Scripture applying them to our lives in faith and as we do so God is glorified and we are protected from the snares and the traps of the evil one. All you need to live the Christian life is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've just got to have a heart that says Jesus save me. Come into my life. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Fill me with the Holy Spirit so I can resist the devil. So I can resist Jezebel's mind control. So I can have power to follow the Lord Jesus in humility. To bring in the love of Christ into a broken and twisted world. Because you have the mind of Christ when you become born again. When you become born again you receive the Holy Spirit. You get into the Word of God and the Holy Spirit brings the Word alive so that you may know God on a deeper level and as you know the Lord, on a, as you get to know Him more and more, your actions begin to flow in the right direction. All the apostles knew of the battle that's in the mind. Hence Paul said to the Philippians in chapter 4 verse 8, he, he wrote, Finally, brethren, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. You know, in verse 8 here of Philippians, here... It is like Paul the Apostle. Verse 8 here is like Paul the Apostle's wall of purity for the mind, which is a thinking mind, an active mind, a mind that is not confused, a mind that is not passive, a mind that is sober, a mind that is loving with all of its strength, the Lord Jesus Christ. All the words Paul uses here in verse 8 are a picture of God's precious word. Paul is calling us to fix our minds upon the things of God. In verse 7 of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 7, God guards our hearts and minds with his peace. Our responsibility is to think on God's word to think it through, to focus our lives on the things that please God, to live according to God's ways, which can only be done if you, if you feed on the Word of God. 
And then you turn that into action. In fact, when you feed on the Word of God, the actions begin to naturally flow because you know what you should do. You love your enemies. Forgive those who persecute you. Seek the best for your neighbour. No, we're all called to trust in the Lord and to serve Him. When we find ourselves in a Thyatira situation, God's Word is like a map that helps us to navigate through Thyatira land. God's Word can act like a helmet of salvation to protect our thoughts, to lead us in the right direction. You see, God's precious word, what does it do? It reveals the Lord Jesus Christ. It reveals God the Father. And as they are revealed, what do you do? You begin to worship. You begin to bless. And you begin to exalt his holy name. As we have the mind of Christ, it leads us into victory. See, verse 26 of Revelation 2 says... And to the one who overcomes, hallelujah, you're an overcomer if you're in Christ. And to the one who overcomes and continues in my work until the end, I will give authority to rule over nations. With the mind of Christ we serve, knowing right and wrong, so we may overcome the works of Jezebel and Satan. We may be set free from the knowledge, from the depth of satanic knowledge and do Jesus' works here on earth. And a reward for remaining faithful will be we shall rule over the nations. This shall only be given to those who follow faithfully the Lord Jesus Christ. It will be given to those who endure until the end. And he will give you the authority to do so. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 2, Do ye not know the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? Friends, if you're born again, You are a saint, a saint of the living God. And one day you will judge the world. Paul goes on to say in verse 3, you will judge the angels. And the things that pertain to life, we will be given such heavenly wisdom that we can have such penetrating discernment to make the right judgment calls when we are ruling over the nations with Christ, ruling over every situation in a way that brings God all the glory as his perfect will is being worked through you. See, in verse 8, we all, you know, we also are given the morning star. We are given the Son of God in his glory. Surely our minds should be focused on Jesus, the morning star, in a day of darkness. Our minds are not passive, but looking to Jesus, they are active in his word, active in prayer, so that the right actions may follow in the Lord's work, in the Lord's service, as we use our minds to glorify, And to love the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what, who or what influences your mind and thinking the most? Is it a specific problem? Is it your favourite politician? Or maybe not your favourite politician? Is it a film? Is it music? Is it a book? Is it computer games? Is it cartoons? But most importantly, is it Jesus and a Jesus way of life. How much does that influence us? Has Jesus captured our heart and our mind? Or has somebody else captured it? Has Hollywood captured it? Or has the Lord Jesus Christ captured it? 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious, precious word. Lord, we're living in, uh, Lord, dark and twisted times. And yet we live in a world so full of beauty of your creation. Lord, you have placed us in this land at such a time as this. May our minds and hearts be guarded and protected. May we go forth in all humility, sharing the good news of Jesus, bringing his light into dark situations. Father, will you use each and every one of us Lord, to bring healing to those who are wounded and broken. Lord, you've given us, your believers, the gift of reconciliation. To see people reconciled to yourself. Empower us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Lord, set captives free from the influence and the power of Jezebel. May captives be set free from deep demonic satanic knowledge in Jesus' name, where they don't even know where it's flowing from. Lord, would you purify our minds? Would you cleanse us? Lord, show us anything in our lives that is not right with you, so we may live holy and blameless before you as you prepare us for that day when we will judge this world and angels, Lord and the things that pertain to life. Lord, let us live a good life that is pleasing to you, in Jesus' name. Father, push back this COVID, we pray. Push back this COVID death, we pray, in Jesus' name. And let your hands of protection be over us as we seek to follow you with childlike faith in this land. Amen. May the light of Christ continually shine into your hearts to be your roadmap to lead you and to guide you. Love you all and God's richest blessings rest upon you.